no matter like what stage and what level you are at life, like everybody's kind of going through some of the same struggles. All right, welcome back uh, to another episode of Champion School, where we are breaking down leadership, mindset, uh, character, really anything that relates to bettering yourself. Uh, I am Ray McIntyre, once again joined by Austin Byler, BZB. How you doing? Ship it a hip, ship it a hip. I am doing great, Ray. Uh, great call this morning. Great day so far. Good workout. And the sunshine is out in Arizona, baby. So the rain is away and the heat is back but uh, the, <laughs> i know we're getting into good news today but i'm going to give you a, an early disclaimer on the good news there's a couple teams from different areas that we've worked with or know that are coming here this weekend and i'm hoping to get out there and get to see them play and or get some lunch or some coffee so that'll be cool man it's fun to see this baseball network and sporting network how everybody kind of comes together man and arizona is kind of like the hub on the west coast it, they come together and and you know what it's only going to get bigger this community that we're building do into partly because of some projects we have coming up and um and really first of all let's put this out there if you're not subscribed to the newsletter it is going to drastically benefit you for the upcoming thing that we have coming up uh we'll be announcing some things next week uh it's short short version it's an nft project and for you guys that don't know about it we're going to be putting some stuff out but follow project sandlot at project sandlot on twitter and make sure you're in the, the newsletter because we are going to be sending some stuff out to the people that are following that, you know, the people that have been with us since the beginning, uh, and they're going to benefit from it for sure. Um, anyways, good news of the week. Good news of the week. College football is back, baby. Oof, let's go, baby. I love it, dude. Uh, and for, for whatever reason, part of me just just waking up on a Saturday morning and seeing college football like game day and stuff on TV gets me so amped and brings me back to days where Joe Mack and I are just, you know, hanging out and getting things rolling as, as kids. So um, what's your thought on college football? I mean, you got the same top three teams as every year. So um, what's your <laughs> the same teams are going to keep winning. I'm fired up, man. And you're right. There is something special about football Saturdays and Sundays. I'm not the biggest football fan necessarily, but having football on the weekends and those those midweek games where it's Thursday or Monday night, and I know they're going to sprinkle some more in this year, I believe. It's awesome. It's fun to watch, man, because you get to see real competitors. Uh, I got to watch a little bit of the end. I didn't realize that Ohio State and Minnesota played last night for the opening day. And one of our old security guards at uh, Sunrise Mountain High School here where, where I went to school his son is a freshman I think I believe he's starting for Minnesota or he's playing really? or getting some sort of a role so I know he was out there and uh, it looked like a good game I know Ohio State ended up coming out on top there but really good game two teams battling and it's fun to just watch the college atmosphere man I like seeing fans in the stands I love yeah. seeing ASU yeah. it's been two years I didn't know that until last night on the news it's been two years since any fans have been allowed at the ASU stadium that's insane. Really? So seeing, Damn. yep. So seeing kids getting ready and to getting their tickets, and they got all the Sun Devil gear on. Although I'm not a big Sun Devil football fan, it's fun to watch the hometown team still go out there and, and crush it, and just to see football back, baby. I, as a, a former Wildcat, uh, <laughs> you know, I worked with the the U of A for three years, and I I can't vouch for ASU, but. Uh, I'm fired up that they're having people back in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hey, it's going to be a good Wildcat versus Sun Devil game, baby. That's right. That's almost always, uh, I want to say Thanksgiving weekend around that time. Yeah, kind of cool with that rival rivalry week. So, uh, shouts out, college football back. Number two, uh, we, we can't pull the clip of me uh, saying Hawaii was going to win the Little League World Series. So, not, not good news of the week. But good news of the week, Michigan pulled it out. Um, pump for them but here's here's interesting take on this and and i want to hear your your thoughts the way the little league bracket set up is hawaii basically beat michigan right to send them to the losers bracket michigan comes back wins that game to go to the semis to play hawaii who's undefeated hawaii loses michigan gets to go to the world series final 
both Hawaii and Michigan have one loss against each other. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just said it all right there without having to say anything. Come on. You got to give them one more game. The team who loses, like they went head to head. They're both good teams. Yes, they both have one loss. You can't just let one team go if they're even. I mean, we think about it in any sport. It's best of three, at least in the beginning. At least give them a best of three or a best of one. Like, it may get one or the other. No ties, right? No ties. Because yeah. then Hawaii is sitting there like, look, we have the exact same record. We lost once. We also beat you. Who We don't know who's the better team because we're one and one So why not Damn. just – that makes no sense to me. But I haven't followed it enough except for, I believe, Gavin Weir, the lefty. That the is coach. absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Clayton Kershaw, freaking pain. And now he's probably going to get a D1 scholarship to a Power 5 after this. Uh, who knows how early they oh, go. Oh, he committed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, dude, come on. Uh, I saw something on Twitter yesterday. And it was imagine? like eighth grader t- uh, I committed. I was like, man, that is just – am I surprised? We, no. We might know the guy that got him. I yeah, know. I know. <laughs> Very true. Who knows? So, uh, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. It's a business. You got to put out your best team and hey, get them early, right? Catch them out. Yeah. I mean, some of those kids in the Little League World Series, it is fully impressive. And, you know, we got to give props to Michigan. Congrats on winning the, the way that things formatted. But, you know, congratulations to Hawaii on a, a heck of a trip, too. Yep. Yep. On to this week's end. Uh, this week's Zen, I wanted to, I don't know. I didn't, I wasn't watching what you're doing. You weren't watching me at all. I was watching you and you were not watching me. So at least the viewers, if you're watching on YouTube and if you're not get on YouTube channel, major league (laughs) university, let's go. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, no, all good. All good. (laughs) Uh, I was going to say, we kind of talked about this a little bit in leadership. I think it'd be good to, to break down, but, um, everybody goes through slumps. Uh, it's, it's bound to happen, especially in baseball, but I mean, it can happen in any sport and, uh, it can happen in life, right? Like we just kind of get down sometimes, um, particularly on the athlete side, what is, what are some ways that you're telling athletes to, uh, work themselves out of slumps or, uh, to a mindset to really help themselves when they're in it? Yeah, that's, that's probably the million dollar question too. And I don't know if there's any like perfect answer for it, but the best advice that we have for young athletes or any athletes that are struggling in slumps is stop finding your value in your results and start finding your value in your preparation and your process. It sounds so simple and, and sometimes even cheesy, like, ah, oh, I get it coach. Like I have to have a good process, but guess what? The reason why your slumps get longer and longer and longer is because you're chasing the result. You're going up to the plate saying, I have to get a hit. I have to score this goal. I have to make this free throw. Instead of just saying, I get to go out on this field and compete today. Did I compete at my best today? Like Coach G said the other day. And so it's just so good to be able to hear this and see this. And and for athletes out there that are struggling with this, take a step back, right? Take a step back and just see it for what it is. You get to go on the field. You have an opportunity to go compete. It's not the end of the world if you have a bad game, because guess what? The next day is a new game. And sometimes if we're in travel ball, that next hour is a new game. And if we keep Mm -hmm. worrying about the past at bats and what just happened, my results wise, I'm going to keep getting the same exact results that I've been getting because I'm putting so much more pressure on myself. So to me, there was a really good conversation I had with a college athlete Two days ago or three days ago, he goes to Fordham University. He's a sophomore pitcher, and he's looking to increase his mental game. Right, He's been wanting to really just take it to the next level. This dude reached out. like That's how eager he was. I love that because not very many people are going to reach out, especially when you have the word mental game because you think you have a problem. But there is no problem. This is like a a, a performance enhancer. right? This is the secret sauce to help you get to that next level. And we were talking, and he's like, man, I just start putting so much pressure on myself on the mound that I cannot throw strikes. I just don't throw strikes. I I go from four balls to eight balls to 12 balls, and then I'm out of the inning or the game. Instead of when I'm dialed, I'm I'm locked in, I'm in flow state, and I'm rolling. And I asked him, I said, what's the difference between when you're walking eight, nine dudes or or however many balls you're throwing in a row versus when you're carving and throwing strikes like I saw the video the other day? Seven pitches, one inning, you're done. He said, I was more carefree. I didn't care about the result. I just attacked. It's like, oh, so were you trying to dance around the strike zone? No. Were you competing? Yes. Were you attacking? Yes. Were you aggressive? Yes. Were you confident? Yes. Did you care about the result? No. And I said, okay, well, what happens when you are struggling? 
Like what happens when you start struggling? He's like, well, I start to get those negative thoughts in my head and saying, I can't throw a strike. What if coach pulls me? What if I'm not allowed back here? What if my scholarship gets revoked? And these are real thoughts that a lot of athletes are having today, Mm -hmm. right? Right now. And so hearing that we came up with a power phrase, right? A power phrase. And it was carefree. I'm like, well, what's a word that works for you? For me, it was breathe, um, attack, be aggressive. There's just compete, like just a little simple phrase that got me back to home base. And I was like, what, what can be a phrase for you that sticks with you, that, that you like, that might help you just get back to your, you can say Zen or, or your best moment. And he said, carefree. I used to always tell myself, be carefree out there. It's like, cool, put it under your hat. And if you ever start to feel like you're carrying too much, look at the hat, use it as a reminder, your reset button, boop, hit the button and turn the page and go back to attack mode. So I know I kind of went roundabout on it, but my best advice to athletes struggling with slumps is to take the pressure off of yourself and stop trying to get the result. Just go up there having a good at bat, having a good approach or competing in whatever game or sport that you are playing in that specific field. Yeah. Easier said than done sometimes for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is both of us speaking from this, you know, um, cause it's just part of it. But, uh, there was a conversation you and I had, a, I want to say two years ago that really changed my outlook on this and has helped me even talking to athletes. Um, and it was, it was right around the time we had a guy that was struggling a lot. That's very talented and, and just didn't have it, you know, their mind in the right place. And it was, you know, you had had a uh, coach from the Diamondbacks, I think, talk to you and, and said, like, we're looking for the one for one. Like, we are no longer going to look at the game as five at bats put together. It's just, hey, this at bat is I'm going to try and go one for one. And that doesn't mean for average either. That just means I'm going to try and have a quality at bat this at bat. And then when it's over, you get another opportunity the next time and then the next time. And as long as you're able to separate those as bat- at bats, the more you're able to do that. You're able to live and die just in that, that little window. Right. And then when it's over, it's over. And then we get to go again. And it's not looking at this big old snowball of, of everything. Is that correct? Was it the, the diamondbacks that. Yep. Coach um, Stubbs, man. Uh, the dude was, I don't even know, lifelong 280 hitter in the big leagues. I don't, I don't know how long he played. He's very humble and, and just a great guy, a great mentor, a great coach. And that was what was happening. Ray, I was struggling during that time. And it's in like 180. I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. And he said that exact same. He said, look, by what are you trying to do up there? You trying to go three for three every game? You trying to go four for four? I was like, yeah, I want to go three for three. Yeah, I want to go four for four. Yeah, I want yeah. to be in the paper. Maybe I want to be on Twitter. Come on, pump me up. And he said, mm-hmm. look, stop trying to go three for three today. Each at bat, you're going to go one for one. And that could mean deep fly ball that you just missed, but you took a good swing. It could be a strikeout that you worked an 11 pitch at bat. It could be you kicking a goal right off the goalpost, but you had a good shot and approach. It could be you driving to the hole, missing your layup, but guess what? You were aggressive instead of passive in basketball. So there's so many ways that you can go one for one in any sport that you play. It's just shifting that mentality and then really having the self-awareness to know when you're starting to get out of the circle. Like Ken Revisa says, when you're starting to go from green to yellow, from yellow to red, right? And you start to feel yourself getting a little tense, nervous, anxious, fearful. How do you bring it back in? Well, the one-for-one mentality keeps you more in the present moment. Such a powerful concept. It's, it's kind of sad because I don't think I have a yellow. <laughs> I think it just goes green to red. Like I'm with you, you know, but yeah, yeah it's, you. it's, it's something that's big, you know, and the slumps are, are real and, and shortened it into those segments. I mean, golfing, for example, is the, is the easiest one to, to look at it as that, like, one swing at a time, one for one. Like if I can get a good swing this time, great. But so many times I'm sitting there on the sixth hole, 15 over going like <laughs> my day is over. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My brother Ray is the worst. And, and I, and I really want to get a golfing session with me, you, and both of our brothers, because we're all oh hot headed in our own ways. <laughs> we practice this, right? I think we, we work on it and I feel like, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm the calmest out of all of us maybe, but I might have the biggest trigger once you really get me going. And my brother is hilarious to watch. He'll take that first tee shot and shank it into the houses. And he's like, I freaking suck today. I I'm the worst <laughs> and the whole day sucks because that first shot was bad. I'm like, Zach, look, calm down, deep breath, take the next shot, throw it in the middle of the fairway, dude. We didn't pay to hit in the rough today, <laughs> dude. We paid to hit in the fairway. Like if That's you right. have to throw it in the fairway so you can get a clean shot, at least you feel good about yourself. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. I've had some, some real flashes of um, being a stand up citizen on the golf course, you know, <laughs> just from real frustration. So I get you, Zach. No worries, buddy. <laughs> um, Shout out. Moving forward, uh, today's interview, uh, and we didn't mention it at the start, top of the podcast, but we should have, uh, Jared Perkins. He is 
first of all, one of our, our closest friends, he's a new writer for us. So for those of you guys that have been following the podcast and you've been able to see some of the work he's done um, and are sorry, not the podcast, the blog, the uh, following the blogs and he's writing for us. Right. And, and this is in his free time, you know, and generally he's working on policy uh, in DC where he's, he's fighting to help people with uh, mental health and, and growing that policy. And, uh, and he's really doing some really awesome things. And, and on top of that, he's a great baseball mind, you know, like he's, mm-hmm. he has that analytical mind and, and can see it from a fan standpoint, as well as the analytical side. So, uh, I really enjoyed this interview. What'd you think about it? Yeah, I thought it was incredible, man. Jay Perk, shout out. Uh, we got to know each other here in Arizona a little bit and then went to Nevada together. Uh, he, he was at Klamath Falls Gyms, my first summer ball league. He was the intern there. I'm doing some stuff in the front office and just a great dude. Stand up guy, man. 10 out of 10. So awesome. Such a nice dude. Um, very genuine, right? very authentic. But what he's doing is so powerful. He's helping change these policies to help people get better access to mental health and mental care. And in the world where 70% of teens say that, mental health is a real issue between kids 13 to 17 years old. And Mm. all these people are committing suicide or using drugs, alcohol addictions that are killing them every single day. It's so powerful what he's doing. So I think just giving people access, right? Giving people a resource to use. Now, I don't think anybody's going to make a change until they are actually ready. But what Mm. he's doing is allowing easier opportunities, easier access to care for people who are struggling and need some help. And um, it's okay to struggle, man. It's okay to be in a a rut sometimes. And it's great to have people in your corner that can help you. So we're pumped to have Jay Perk writing our blogs. Man, he's been killing it. They're so professional, so good. And just really straight to the point. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, go check it out and just read for yourself share it with somebody that can it can benefit and i'm excited for what this podcast has to come it's very very powerful all right without further ado jay perk you want me to send you it? Got, oh you got to okay. raise i was waiting for you <laughs> uh all right. Well, we're back and uh, joined today by Jared Perkins. Uh, he is officially on the staff, which is sick. Number one. Exciting time. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he also has a full time job, so he's he's a little <laughs> a little two way. He's been writing a lot for Major League Baseball and, and doing some stories on that stuff. And uh, he's been joining us to really kind of mold the two together of the mental piece, mental health side, and. Uh, and writing about baseball. So joined today by Jared Perkins. Let's go, yeah. everybody. Good, good. How are y'all doing? Fired up to have you, man. It, we were yeah. talking just before we got on. Like it's been so long that I know. we actually sat years. down. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna catch up in person once we can get through all these COVID flights and stuff. That's right. Where's Where's the meetup spot gonna be? Well, like Tahoe action. Oh, the Always Lake Tahoe. Down. Let's go. Yeah. Man. That's one of my favorite places on the planet. I got married there the year. Oh, that's my ago happy now. place when I was back there. Loved it. <laughs> that's it. So for a little background, give the people, first of all, tell the people how we even know you and then uh, tell them how you got to where you're at today. Yeah. So I got to know Austin and Ray through kind of baseball. So I started out working with the Kansas City Royals for a little bit, a clubhouse guy, video guy back in the day. Um, and then when I got to college, I started working as a student manager for the Arizona State baseball team. Um, and then after that, I transferred over to the University of Nevada, Reno, uh, where I met both of you all. Uh, didn't realize I played Austin in high school at one point, got mashed on by Sunrise. I was going to say, you want to explain that real quick if I have to interject? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what, 18 to 5 one year, I think? That was it was, uh, I know Jeff Decker hit three home runs at your place one year, and that was yeah, insane. Yeah, one to left, one to center, one to right field. It was cool. Yeah. They hit every part of the park. It's nice. <laughs> That's awful. We, our coach uh, looked at our score guy. He's just like, how many home runs have we hit in like the last? He goes, how many home runs have they hit today? And score guy goes, six. He goes, we haven't hit six home runs in the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> As a team. <laughs> Jeez, that was brutal. Good. That was so good. Um, Perk, I want you to kind of, as you continue to keep going, I want you to explain a little bit of your work with Rand because you were doing a lot of stuff and you're going to have to uh, refresh my memory on what the acronym stands yeah. for. But I know it's a lot of mental health work. And um, we were connected with a great mutual friend, uh, Jake Wiskersen, and he's so awesome. Runs Zephyr Wellness up in Reno, Nevada, doing an amazing job for mental health and just our society. Um, and then um, a lot of gun rights, right? He's doing a lot of stuff with that yeah. and mental health behind it. Right. So it's yeah. really cool. But 
kind of dive into that a little bit, Perk. I'm so interested in that. It's just such a cool deal that you have there and, and that you were kind of going through. Yeah, that used to be there, and I was there for about three years working in their office of congressional relations, just trying to find like the, the way to bridge the gap between uh, the research that we had and uh, Congress, so finding those policy debates that were happening on the Hill and figuring out where our research would align with kind of uh, having some impact there. I recently moved over to another organization now where um, it's an organization that is aiming to uh, increase access to healthcare for medically underserved populations. So those populations that are either on Medicaid or they don't have health insurance where they have these gaps in access to care. Um, and so we're trying to, I'm working on behavioral health and substance use issues and telehealth, which is kind of a new recent one to kind of bridge some of those gaps. So I've uh, been doing that for <laughs> like two weeks now, just started it two weeks ago. Um, but just trying to develop different behavioral health policy ideas that can help increase access to care for those who need it. And so just kind of trying to align those different types of ways. It's, it's such meaningful work that you do, Perk, and that's the thing that I love about it. And for me, coming from a background with some anxiety and depression and then having um, five brothers and sisters and three of them have some sort of mental illness, right, clinical mental illness, yeah. and um, just witnessing it for my entire life and being around it, I have a different perspective, I think, than a lot of people. And for you being in the world of that, you're the one making policies around it to help that, right, and to gain access. Yeah. So how do you use the congress side right and that could be i'm sure very challenging right with like the the moral side of i know the right thing to do i know how we're supposed to do this or even your own opinions and getting that passed within everyone like how does that process work man take us through like a a policy yeah. process the good, the good part about most mental health care issues is they're very bipartisan in a sense because there's a lot of a of need out there and people kind of realize that um i think the one thing that's been i've been grateful for now is to kind of have a, a job that's a little bit outside of working with congress and being able to help actual different kind of health centers and things like that people on the ground that are doing the actual work and actually trying to to have some impact um i think the the one thing that kind of led me into all of this was my own personal journey kind of like you it's uh, i dealt with a lot of issues kind of uh, back in the day where i had no self-confidence. I wasn't happy with who I was. And it was going through like those struggles and finding really, finally realizing like the important role that therapy played. I mean, that had a huge impact on my mm -hmm. life. And that the one thing you kind of start to realize when you start working through all these things, you can't find joy in anything else until you find joy with like who you are. And so like before mm -hmm. you even like, think about when you're, you're playing in athletics or you're doing anything, um, you might love baseball, but if you're not happy with who you are inside and like the things that you're doing in life, right, everything outside of that and outside of that realm of who you are, like it's impossible to find joy and happiness in the things around you, even though all the good things in the world could be happening at once. But if you're not like happy and confident with who you are. And so that journey for me, like it took me forever to get out of that kind of spiral and cycle. And that's what kind of drove my passion to mental health care issues, um, just because I realized the important role that therapy played for me. And then just wanting everybody to have access to that kind of care and wanting to be and having that freedom to feel like they can speak out about the issues and the struggles and the battles that they're going through as well. I mean, and then that's like you mentioned, Jake, that's he became one of my mentors. Um, and of course, great friend as well. Mm -hmm. And the work that he does and how much he like truly cares about people and the helping people and getting people access to that care. That's that's just it's it's admirable, everything that he does out there. So good. And and I love the vulnerability too, man, of sharing your story. And we're going to get into that a little, uh, even a little yeah. more. Right. And so um, I think so many times, even with just, you, you mentioned, Hey, if you're not happy in uh, with yourself, how's, how are you going to be happy with athletics or how are you going to be happy in your job or your work? And so many mm -hmm. people are always searching and seeking to find happiness somewhere else. And they think that it's like a yeah. destination instead of the journey. And for you, I love the, the fact that you can't find joy and what you're doing unless you find joy in who you are first. That is so good. I love yeah. that line. And um, for you, what was that, that process? You talked about therapy a little bit there, but what was the process that you started to take when one, like you needed help, you recognize that, Hey, I need some help here. I can't do this on my own. And it's time to talk to somebody. And two, um, what were like the, the next steps that you took to go get access to that? Just in case anyone else out here is listening or even has a, a relative or a family member that's struggling with something that they can get some help and some care for. Yeah, luckily I had close friends who were going through something similar, and it started just by talking with them. Um, mostly, a lot of that happened during the pandemic. Um, we had, mm -hmm. I had two friends that kind of 
went through some similar things. We were just doing guitar sessions. Like we would have a couple of beers, we'd grab on the Zoom and we would just have these like guitar sessions and then it would kind of turn into us just talking about everything that we were going through in life. Um, and that's kind of when I had like the realization, okay, I need to seek out professional help too at the same time. Because it's good to have those friendships and those relationships to kind of counterbalance the professional help. But at the same time, like you can't just rely on other people necessarily to like, solve all your problems in a sense, but it's good to have those relationships that you can feel comfortable having those conversations and know that you're not alone going through those things. Um, and so that's when I started to like seek out and try to find different places to, to go get therapy and things like that. So and that's kind of how like, I started the journey into that. Yeah, that's it. The first of all, like you had said, and we're probably going to have to clip that quote because that's one of the quotes of the year, you okay. know, is like so if you're not happy with yourself. You know, the rest of your world is going to struggle. Um, how have you seen the industry change just in the last decade? I know it's evolving really rapidly and, and there are a lot of high profile athletes that are kind of coming to the light. Uh, on the mental health side, um, Marco Stroman is is one of the huge guys yeah. that we love to talk about. Uh, break down how you've seen this industry change and and maybe even some of those high profile athletes, how they've aided in that change. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, I love seeing all these high profile athletes come out and start talking about these things because and it's not it's not just athletes, but it's celebrities and things like that. They're just kind of putting this issue to the forefront and they're giving people this sense and this notion that it's okay to not be okay. And no matter like what stage and what level you are at life, like everybody's kind of going through some of the same struggles. And I think that we're starting to see this turn to where people are talking about it more, but that the next step is going to be taking action and finding ways to increase like the behavioral health workforce, pro provider workforce, because there's a shortage already in people to go seek treatment. So I, I think about even when I signed up for therapy, there was like a four, three, four month wait before I could even go see really? a provider. And it's just because yes. there's, there's a lot of demand, but there's not, um, a lot of supply mm -hmm. that there's not much I, you probably could talk to jake he could go into depth about all these uh, behavioral workforce shortages but I, it's there's this like there's when you try to become a behavioral health therapist there's really no incentive to go to school for it because it costs a ton of money to get that degree and then on the outset you're coming out with a ton of student loans and you're not going to get paid a ton of money to be a behavioral health care th um, therapist so that's one of the biggest issues and it's so you can you can give everybody all the insurance in the world if they have coverage, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be able to receive care. Um, just because you have insurance doesn't mean you have access to providers and things like that. So I think the next step is trying to figure out, okay, what policies can we kind of put in place and what can we do as a society to kind of keep drawing more attention to this mental health issue and how can we can figure out to make sure people have access to care and people are getting the treatment that they need. So I think that's kind of the, the second step in this is we're seeing a lot of people talk about it. We're seeing the, the destigmatization of mental health. Um, it's still, we still have a lot of progress to make because there's still, there's a lot of notion that uh, if, if you're, you just got to toughen up and battle through and you can't take a step back in order to um, take care of yourself. And there, there's still that notion, even when Simone Biles came out, she felt like there's a lot of pressure to make sure that she kept going forward, no matter what, she couldn't take that step back to take care of herself. So I think it's, we're making progress in towards the stigmatization, but I think there's a lot, a long journey ahead to, to keep going. Is if you had, we're going to, I know policy moves super, super quick in uh, Washington. Um, but if you had all of the, the strings at your, your uh, disposal, what would you say is the right move? Uh, what would you do to, to maybe even just bring a larger workforce into that uh, environment? Yeah, I think the, the one key thing is they, they have like these student loan forgiveness programs for medical providers and kind of opening that up and giving opportunities for behavioral health therapists to, to join in on those. Um, they have programs where if you go to underserved communities and serve in an underserved community for like five years or 10 years or however long, you get your student loans forgiven. So doing things like that in order to get people into the workforce, I think is number one. I think Two is just increasing access through getting people insured and getting people um, the opportunities to just even seek out those um, 
those care. And I think last is just integrating primary care with behavioral health because everybody is willing to go to their primary care physician. But Mm -hmm. if you integrate behavioral health and the primary care can just straight up refer them to someone that can help them with behavioral health needs, kind of training primary care providers to to notice different behavioral and mental health because they're not trained. Primary care providers aren't usually trained to figure out what, what's going on behaviorally or mental or mental health issues. So just having those opportunities where primary care providers can get trained in that, integrating the system where primary care and behavioral health are integrated together. I think those are like the, some of the three steps that can help move towards that. That's so good. I, I love that, Perk. And it's crazy to hear the background of it all, you know, because yeah. the outside you're like, hey, here's the shift. Let's go do it and let's just make it happen. But then yeah. you have to go through legislation. You have to go through people voting for you. You have to go through all these different circles to yeah. get something passed. And the thing that you said that really sticks out to me still from earlier is some people were waiting three to four months. And I know others are waiting over a year on a wait list yeah. in certain towns, cities, or places that have even less access mm-hmm. to therapists. And that's got to be so yeah. challenging for people to find it. And I was talking to another licensed therapist and counselor yesterday, and he's from Chicago. And he said uh, in his town and where he's from in the city, in the area, it's, it's really frowned upon to show that you have anything wrong with you. It's like, you have to put on this yeah. really tough face and you have to yeah. show people that, Hey, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm just going to power through this. Like life, I'm going to keep going. Right. And, uh, in reality, you really can't. And something that Jake mentioned to me, and I'll never forget it in our very first conversation after you connected us is two things. One, all things in life are temporary. And two, mm-hmm. it's important for us to accept and embrace the emotions that we have, not yeah. get rid of them and discard them, but accept yeah. them and embrace them. And those things, like they just stuck out to me forever. So um, how, like, what can we do to just um, speed up that process? I know going into maybe getting people in the workplace a little easier for giving their loans, but I guess like from our end as a, as a friend, yeah. like how can you do it from a, a, just a normal everyday citizen who maybe doesn't license or has the background or degrees to go practice this? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think a lot of it's just creating awareness around it and just listening. A lot of times people just need someone to sit there and just talk to. Um, mm-hmm. You might not have all the answers. You might not have the direct response to make it perfect um, or fix what their problem is because you're not the professional, but mm-hmm. just having, I, I, cause I think about my small friend group that when we talk about these issues, um, we trust each other. So and we don't expect a response or like a, a solution to the issue that we're going through. We are just there then knowing that like, you're not alone. I think that's the biggest thing. And this is because you look at uh, current U.S. Surgeon General wrote a book about loneliness being the next epidemic. And if when people feel like they're alone, that kind of exasperates a lot of the issues that they're going through. Because they feel like they don't have someone to go to. They don't feel like they have this sense of community that they can come back to. And it's kind of an epidemic that's starting throughout the country is this loneliness epidemic where we're getting more further and further apart, kind of getting drifted further and further apart between social media, things like that. I mean, you think about even like everyday interactions. You can now have your groceries delivered. You don't even have to say hi to the person at the grocery checkout store. So it's like you're, we're constantly as a society finding ways that we can just be in our homes and be by ourselves. And it's the same thing with like Netflix streaming. You don't have to go to the movie theaters and be around people. You can just sit at your home, watch Netflix. And so we have this separation where people are starting to feel more and more alone and they don't feel like they have people that they can reach out to or go to for, to talk about these issues. And so like, for me, one of the big things that helped me through a lot of what I went through is I started working at the gym. I well, go do and develop this sense of community. Like I, Every day I loved going there because I knew all the trainers, became friends with all other front desk Mm -hmm. staff, but we had this sense of community, which I didn't have that kind of feeling before. Um, And so that's like what's kind of missing, I think, for a lot of people. Somebody needs to hear that, man, the the listening, right? The listening, like just let that sink in, like listening to your friends, to your family members, to your kids even, um, to your peers or your spouse, just listen. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a smack in the face to me too. Sometimes we're, we're just so internal, you know, we're trying to do everything instead of just, let's just listen and be present. Um, that is so good. Perk, you do all this important work, right? I can't imagine that it's, that it's not stressful, <laughs> right? Like this has to be a high stress job, right? You're, you're helping 
of millions of people be alive. Like this is like between life and death. So it's very powerful. What do you do outside of your work? I'm curious because I know you love the outdoors, <laughs> man. You're about to head out to the outdoors tonight. Yeah. Fill us in on your adventures, on, on what the outdoors means to you and, and just some of the fun things that you do adventure yeah. style wise. I think the the outdoors is like number one for me because I recently moved to an apartment that's like right next to Rock Creek, which is owned by the National Park Service here in DC. And I can just go on strolls and get out. And when like when I'm stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, I can just go on a walk. I can listen to music or I can just go and kind of be on my own and just have that chance to kind of reflect and refresh. And I didn't have that before where I was living. I was like, I live right on this busy street. I go on my balcony, you got horns honking, you got streetcar bells rolling through. And it's just, you never have this sense of separation from what was like causing your anxiety and stress. Like the big city has a tendency to do that. Now I'm in like a quiet neighborhood where there's birds chirping, there's just trees and you get that separation. Like you don't feel like you're getting bogged down in the city. And I think for me, for probably help a lot of people, it's just taking those opportunities to kind of just be present with yourself, not having an activity, not having your phone in front of you, not having your laptop in front of you, just having those opportunities where you can even sit, whether it's meditating for 10 minutes, just trying to find ways to breathe. Those things have helped me so much, especially when times of anxiety and stress come up. And I think those are key things that everybody can do kind of on a daily basis. So separation and loneliness too are two completely different things, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we need the separation. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're lonely, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and like you'd said, putting the phone away, I, I, when I, my favorite point of the day is when my phone is almost dead and I go in and put it and charge it in the other room and I sit back in the living room, you know, I'm yeah. like, here we go. There it is real yeah. world. So, yeah. Um, wild anyways, uh, you talked music. We had mentioned music. What, what are you listening to? What's on your iPod? I'm a go-to folk Americana type guy. So like the Wood Brothers, Jamestown Revival, a little more laid back stuff. That's kind of my, my, my vibe. I play a little acoustic guitar once in a while. So just kind of do those things that kind of keep me laid back. You got the acoustic yeah. guitar look, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know, dude. The beard <laughs> is golden, man. Come on. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you gone rock climbing? You're an outdoors I guy. I haven't. I have dude. not gone rock climbing. You got to try it's awesome. I I have it. Go ahead. They're starting to put like a ton more rock climbing gyms throughout the city and try and get people to do that. Get in on a buy, break down your first experience. (laughs) Rock climbing. (laughs) I saw that vlog that you guys had. Uh, It's out there. There's a lot, a lot of clips that didn't make it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, tune in to watch, right? Um, <laughs> go check out the vlogs if you haven't seen them. Shout out Jay Perk for dropping the line. They're on our YouTube right. channel, Major League <laughs> University. Let's go get it out there. But uh, dude, the first rock climbing experience, I am deathly afraid of heights. I hate heights and I don't like <laughs> feeling unsafe. You know, yeah. I like to feel safe. So yep. uh, originally we're doing the free wall, you know, and I'm kind of starting to climb. I get like two up and I jump off because I'm scared. I get two up and I finally get to the top and I'm like, so I feel like I conquered the world. And I started to really like it, the free one. And then Ray's like, well, we can't leave until you go on the big wall. I'm like, dude, I'm not strapping into the harness and going all the way up there. That's like 50 to 60 feet high. Dude. And then it was like, I've never been more in the zone in my life going on that wall it was so scary but i was just like hey it's it's there was no like uh indecision it was next step next step next step that was the most present i've been in my entire life on that wall it was crazy the (laughs) biggest tunnel vision uh and so that was such a cool experience so if you get the chance to go do it hey rock it out man rock it out on the rock yeah one of my friends has tried to get me to go ice picking and i'm like ah I don't know if I – now you got me going in the ice. I'm like, eh, oh, no. that seems more unstable than rock climbing. Not. I'm out on that. I'm out on that. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's – that's for me when I look at the yoga versus the Bikram yoga that we were talking about with Kev. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going to be in a hot room sweating and trying to do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. I'm, I could get on a wall, but I'm not going to get on an ice wall with a pick that's just ready to break. There's no shit. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. It's like I, my friend's like, oh, we should go whitewater rafting. Like, cause West Virginia's got some of the biggest rapids. And I was like, and I'll go tubing with like a cooler and just crew groups down there. I'm not about to go fall into some, like, the, I can't remember the levels, like 10, level 10 rapids. I'm like, no, I'm good. No, thanks. No, thanks. No, let's go to a lazy river or, uh, you know, a wave pool at a water park all day. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. 
How's uh? You said it's get it's pretty hot over there in the summers, huh? Yeah, it's brutal. It's uh, <laughs> it's like ninety five, and it's all kinds of humid. So you go out running, and then you're just drenched. Jeez. Make it about like three miles, and it's just like, no, I'm good. This is it. <laughs> when does it turn nice out there? When is it? When is when is like ideal DC living? Oh, fall time is amazing here. Colors change in Shenandoah National Park. And it's that place is amazing out there in the fall. You can go out hiking. There's like a ton of outdoors places, trails, awesome views. But Shenandoah is great during the fall. For so for cool. for someone that hasn't been to DC, what is like what do they have to do when they get there? I, I know we're trying to make it out there. I have uh, my in-laws actually live in Virginia, not too far. So nice. this would be a, a cool swing to get up and see, see you and, and experience yeah. some things. What are some things that people new to DC need to do? You got to do them all like the monuments, just do that monument tour, go see MLK, Lincoln, watch the Washington monument, Jefferson. That's like, that's the key thing that everybody does. Um, I'm trying to think of the other things that are like, little hidden go see the Capitol, the white house of course do all those fun things um then they got what's called the wharf get a little water area they've just built the wharf up recently uh there's a concert venue there a bunch of restaurants um just go walk up and down the water they got a fish market dude a little I'm fish in. market i like that um yeah Perk, you do a ton of work in the fantasy baseball world and the prospect world and i'm i'm anxious and curious to hear your thoughts on who is an exciting young prospect that you've been following or for those fantasy baseball guys and girls <laughs> out there who are those sleeper picks that you need down the stretch to help <laughs> you get into the, the playoffs man come on hashtag draft kings we are sponsored uh, not sponsored <laughs> that's a it's that one guy that went to u of a right back school matt fraser is it fraser fraser Matty yeah. frey he, that dude's guy's a legend a He's uh with the Pirates, right? Yeah. Um, he's with Easy in Altoona or was yeah, in Altoona. Double a. Yep. Yeah. And and he's he's hit like twenty six bombs, dude. Right. Yeah. He, he was like twenty five stolen bags too. Uh, like he's that. a freak athlete. His dad, his dad is jacked, like and and was a great player too. And uh, his brother actually is a TikTok like big time TikToker. <laughs> Three million followers just hit it. Shouts out to his brother. But, uh, yeah, I think they went out and visited him, uh, I want to say, a couple months ago. And then all of a sudden it just took off. The guy's legit. Wow. Took off. No, Who else, that's insane. Who else you know about? I know I know you're doing a lot. Oh, obviously, the Royals yeah. are one of your favorite teams to cover. So Yeah, I mean, the Royals got a ton of guys now. They got Bobby Wood Jr. That dude's going to be legit, unbelievable. He's got, he's got all the tools that you want and a player. Uh, he's a five-tool guy, just speed, power. Defensively, it's unreal. It can probably shortstop or third base. So when the, he comes up next year or whatever, they have Mondesi at short, he'll just play third base. Um, that guy's going to be unbelievable. Wow. I love seeing and hearing about the, the future and the next generation. There's so many talented yeah. athletes. I don't know if you guys got to watch the PG All-American games, but I saw a couple innings. Um I saw a guy from Reno, actually, that got to pitch, Robbie Snelling. That was pretty cool. He's going down to LSU for football and baseball. That dude's a stud. And it was just so many good – yeah, yeah local, local guy. Just slide dude. it in there. Had to slide it in, man. Hey, shout out to Nevada. Man. Let's go. And so – but there was just so many talented athletes there. And I'm looking at these guys, swings, the bodies. I mean, there's a six five six six lefty going NC State. Like, I have to, um, hitting-wise, like, this dude's just – I mean, there's some studs, man. So seeing some of the next generation, it's just fun to follow and watch and just to kind of see the it next. Just getting more athletic, too. I know. I know. Like, it's insane. Even in, like just these high school kids, man, guys are throwing up rates, low nines, way more consistently than usual. And there's way yeah. more of the mid nines coming out of high school than I think there's ever been, let alone the guys who can just flat out hit the ball, man. Just good it's like 10 to 10 years ago, if you threw 95, that was like a huge deal. Now everybody's like pumping 98 to 100 out of every bullpen that you can think of. 95, 95 is a long reliever now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's your soft tosser. Dude, so. I'm watching the, the Padres and Dodgers yesterday, and I haven't watched much baseball. And they go from Nebel, who was this, uh, the closer of the year or whatever with the Rockies, I believe. Yeah. And then they went to Trahan or Trahan. Um, who is just – if you hit him, <laughs> dude, if you hit that Delish. guy, how do you even hit that fastball? Oh, like a 102-mile-an-hour sinker? I, I mean – The ball drops out of the zone. 
And then, by the way, he can go 94 cutter the other way. Like, yeah. come on, dude. And then he's got a hook, like, at 87. Like, give me a break, dude. And then they go into uh, uh, oh Kenley Jansen, right, to close it out. I mean, that's their 7, 8, oh. 9, let alone the 6, right? The 6 is Bickford. They have Joe Kelly sitting in the bullpen. I'm sitting here like, man. The area oh, started dude. the game. Yeah, like, he's, he's that one hitter. It's just 94, you know? I know. Yeah. It's like, man, you have no breaks. So the ability to just – stay consistent and compete in those. I mean, that's got to be so yeah. challenging. Are they going to move the do – you, do you think they'll ever move the mound back? Are they doing that experiment in a minor league, like a, one of the independent league teams or something? That league is so sketch. I mean, they were doing all kinds of weird yeah. stuff with that league. But but really, do you think it happens? I mean – yes. I'd be shocked that would be I, – that. I mean, the hitters aren't getting worse. Like hitters are – I mean, they're hitting more home runs, striking out more, but – they're That's because they change their approach completely. They have, they're not playing small. Agreed. Well, and think about the away. shift, though. Like, think about the shift, too. I mean, you think about how many big yeah. lefties hit the ball hard to the forehole that is just getting gobbled up um, right here. I can't stand it, dude. You hit a, a, a <laughs> pistol on the ground or a rip a top spun line drive to right field, and the guy's standing in shallow right and one hops it and throws it right to you, and you're done. You're not even halfway down the line. It's like, come on. Yeah. Man. So. Uh, and yes, shift basically ended Ryan Howard's career. <laughs> yeah, did. Think about it. It really did. Like, no lie. It's yeah. so challenging. That guy was going off MVPs all day, and then he they did a shift, and he can't hit like 220 anymore. <laughs> yep. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's mindset, though. I mean, like, the, bias clearly stubborn if he doesn't want to go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I like going there. I mean, I'm left center approach, right? As a lefty, but mm. like kind of jack it over like, the wall. It just played the game straight yeah. up, man. See, here's the thing. I would rather see shifts ended in band, which I know they said they're not going to do, but I wish they would. Yeah. Um, but I would rather see shifts banned than the mound move back. And just to see, yeah. just to see. And then that. To help the hitters again, let's just put it six inches back. Let's just help. I'm hitter biased, if you can't tell. Yeah, 61 <laughs> feet, you know? 61. Like, I mean, it gives you a little bit more time to see that what, thing, Rod. Strikeout numbers are going up literally every year. Like, is there yeah. ever going to be a time where that's going to stop? I mean, everybody's just going with a launch angle. I think that's why the, the strikeout rates are going up, because everybody's trying – the home runs are going up, too. Yeah. So it's not like guys – I mean, the guys are just hitting the ball less in play and they're just hitting it over the fence more. <laughs> and so it's like an all or nothing approach everybody seems to be taking. Is that, do you think that's more of individuals are being paid just to do that? Or is that? I was that just going to say, yeah, it's because guys are getting paid and they see the, the paycheck. And it's like, if I'm going to hit 30 bombs, I might as well hit 30 sure. bombs and get the paycheck. And no one's going to pay me to get on base. <laughs> Right. And the front office is, is saying it too, right? The stat guys yeah. are all firing the same numbers. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think like the guys are just kind of the, the slap hitters still like the Tommy Edmonds of the Cardinals and stuff like that. Those guys aren't, I don't, I don't know if those guys are going to get paid. Like Mary with Mary Phil from the Royals. That dude didn't get paid. I mean, he got, he got bought out of his arbitration, but he's making like 5 million a year compared to everybody else on the market. And the dude is consistent too, you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. he's going to show up and give you somebody that you know what you're going to get every day. Can play multiple yeah. positions, very valuable. That's an interesting thing, man. It's like the way of the defense, like, and, and not that defense is a bad thing. There's some really good defenders out there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But just the priority placed on hitting today and hitting yeah. the long ball. I mean, look at the Yankees outfield. Come on, man. Give me a yeah. break. Those are like the, the, the three giants of the world. They are huge. I mean, yeah. Come on. Um, well, but they Fernando Tatis and Xander Bogarts who are shortstops and they're like average defensively maybe, but they crush. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're going to play every day. Yep, exactly. You hit, you keep going up, right? If you keep yeah, hitting, you keep moving. <laughs> yeah. Ray, that, do we have a, oh, go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry. I'll get one more question. I do. We do have a game for him. If that's what you're asking. That's we, exactly what I was going to ask. Is it game time? I can sit here and chat ball with perk all day though, you know, so <laughs> I know. like, I was, I'll go one more, you go one more, and then we can dive into the to the game if you want. But uh, nope. I was going to say, is there um, – is this the same old mentality of building a baseball team still catcher, shortstop, center field, like I need to build my team around that, or has that changed a little bit? I know, like you said, Tatis and all these bombers, it doesn't really matter the position, maybe second base, but like what yeah. do you think has that changed? I think a lot of teams – I mean, I'd say – 
teams are really building around pitching and bullpens. That's kind of what the Royals brought to the table in that 2015 World Series. Everybody yeah. knows they, they were shutting it down six through nine. And they had Brian Madsen, they had Greg Holland, Kelvin Herrera, and Wade Davis. Gross. And like that, that was just like, – you, you didn't need a starter to go more than five innings because you just had those guys who come out and just shove. But a lot of teams have made, made Super Bowl pens, and that's kind of like the Dodgers. Like when Austin talked about that, the Dodgers got like a Super Bowl pen now. And mm -hmm. that's, that's all you need. And so starters, if you can get a starter to go five, four or five innings now, that's basically it. So like the starting pitcher seems to be kind of – falling like the importance of the starting pitcher seems to be kind of weighing um because you get your the groms and your scherzers but like outside of those top tier guys i mean you're you're looking at guys who can throw six innings max <laughs> yeah i agree i agree that's huge that's an interesting take too i mean look at the bullpens that's why i think the dodgers as much as i don't care for the dodgers have yeah. a, are well equipped for the playoffs man i mean the yeah. same thing this is some good bullpens in baseball and those teams they're always going to be in the game they always have a chance because they can keep it close and then it just yeah. comes down to chance and, and hitting. So um, let's circle back Perk, for the last question. We'll kick it off to the game time, but um, let's circle back into the mental health aspect. What yeah. are some, some proactive tools or things that people can do to just get more mentally clear, to, to grab hold of their mind a little better, to clear their mind a little more and just live a better life. You know, I know you mentioned meditation earlier, you're a big fan of the guitar, but just any, um, proactive tools that they can use right away to just start shifting that mindset a little bit. Yeah. I mean, mindfulness, meditation, that's like number one. That's going to be a big thing. I do kind of a gratitude journal every day. And I, mm -hmm. I always kind of recommend doing it at nighttime because if you do it in the morning, you're kind of writing what you're grateful for and then the day happens. But at the end of the day, you can kind of write what you're grateful for before you go to bed, what, anything that might have happened throughout the day, things like that. So that's something that's kind of been key for me. Um, I think the one thing to always kind of remember is no matter like what you're doing or what you're struggling with, it doesn't define who you are. So kind of remembering every time that something's going wrong with like your job or your sport, like baseball, you as a baseball player, baseball doesn't define who you are. If you went over three with three strikeouts, that's not who you are as a person. That's just what happened that day in that game. Just remembering like every single day, like the struggles that you go through don't define who you are inside. So like you go get through them and then the next day you can go four for four, hit two home runs. Uh, so you just got to always remember that at the end of the day, that those struggles don't define who you are. And I think that's kind of the big key takeaway. I love that. That's so good. So good. Ray, kick it off to the ship it, ship it, ship it, game time. <laughs> Domination, dude. Really good. Uh, again, this is, we want the people to get to know you. You're on board with us now, and and uh, you're going to be making a lot more appearances. So yeah, I appreciate ready. it. No, this has been awesome. Love just talking with you guys. Well, here here it comes because you now now is part of the game. Uh, we're going to play on it or off it. Uh, right. Buy or sell. Basically, you're either on it. Yes, uh, I am about whatever you just said, or off it. Not my thing. And okay. go ahead and follow up. Uh, just one sentence, uh, short reason as to why. Cool. Sound good? Ten of them coming at you. Is one the Giants win the World Series? Because probably off that. <laughs> it's not. It's not. No. There's there's Let's no go. opinion needed in that. It's okay. just happening, okay. baby. <laughs> Anyways, number one, Taylor Swift. Mm. On it with the new albums. Oh, oh new albums. Old albums. Really? She's gotten better. Yeah, I like the new the new albums were more of a folk vibe, and I was in, I dig the, I dug those. Touche. Hulu. Uh, off it, just I don't have it. I haven't ever used it. <laughs> Fair game. The Washington Nationals. Well, in terms of talent, <laughs> are you on it or off it? Yeah, we'll say talent. Uh, off it since they sold their entire team at the trade deadline. Yeah, got rid of yeah. everybody. Clean Them and the cubbies. Same, yeah. same, same reasoning. Uh, yoga. On it. Big time yoga fan. Big, I, I, I do it once in a while, not as often as I should, because I got no flexibility whatsoever. But same, I should do it a lot more. Often. <laughs> I was gonna say, like neither does Austin. <laughs> uh, Pokemon cards. I don't when I was. I definitely had them when I was little. Nice, We're big uh, collection, binder full. Not, not a huge one, no. <laughs> okay, uh, the NHL. Hmm. I uh, see often because I just don't watch it. I should watch it, uh, but I just the, the games aren't on much here, so not not the biggest hockey fan. 
Are you all you big hockey guys? I, no, but in person, like, have you been to a game in person before? They're a ton of fun in person. Awesome I just can't person. get out on TV. It's I, just, I get bored. Yeah, I know everybody probably says that about baseball too, but I can sit they there do. and watch my things all day. I know. Exactly. I know. Um, <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, on it. 100% on that. <laughs> that movie's awesome. Great film. Uh, video games. Uh, off it. I used to be on it, but I haven't had a system. In, I got one during the pandemic just to tie me over for two months and then got rid of it. <laughs> what was it? Uh, PS4. Nice. I just had the show. That was it. That was right. the only game. That's all you need. <laughs> Mookie. Shout out to Mookie Byler. <laughs> <laughs> um, sushi. Off it. I, I, oh. I know. I know. Everybody oh. gives me shit for it. I just I can't get on the sushi train. Hey, no, it's if you, it's the texture thing for a lot of people that mm-hmm. they just can't get past. So yeah, I, I feel that. Well, the first time I had sushi was homemade sushi by Dan Levine and Brooks Klein. So that, <laughs> hey, that shout out to crazy. those guys, legendary <laughs> Wolf Packers, right there. Yeah, yeah, that might that might be part of the reason why we don't like the sushi. <laughs> <laughs> uh last one and and uh you can bring your fan bias into this or your push personal opinion uh the royals winning the world series in the next five years oh man Ugh, that's tough uh just the way they played this year i don't want to say off it <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but they got a lot of t- i mean the fifth best prospect system in baseball they got they got a bunch of future guys so it's just going to depend on if they gel and then they make the right trades like they did last time to get like James Shields and Wade Davis and to build that team up. I mean, they put Carl Santana and Mike Miner around the young guys this year, which isn't saying much. Um, mm. They're good like five years ago, but now they're both like 35 and they're uh, okay. <laughs> did, did you think that Giants had like what percentage of you said the Giants had an even chance to make the postseason before the season started? Like less than fifty percent. I was like twenty eight. It was zero percent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's always a the, chance, man. You never know. I remember looking at the roster because Jake was talking to me about it once. I don't even know who any of these guys are besides Longoria, Crawford, and Belt. Yeah. <laughs> hey, stacking, sacking, good days. That's all you need. Everybody's gonna lose sixty games. It's just what are you gonna do with that sixty in the middle? You know, that's gonna define whether you're gonna make it into the postseason or not. And- yeah. Here we you go, got guys like Donovan Solano just dropping tanks off the bench to win games. I'm like, who is that? Donnie Barrels. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Barrel. Well, it, hey. it was a blessing to have you, man. I love what you're doing. You're doing such important work in our communities and helping so many people, man, get access to the care that they need. And it's just really cool to see that. And it's always good to have you on the team. If you haven't checked out the blogs yet, if you are new to the podcast, if you're new go to now. the website or us, go now. Yes, they are incredible. They're so good been a massive upgrade and just a big help for our team has been huge so between ray and between jared and, and the blocks that you guys put out man they're so good and, and we'll have some really exciting ones here coming out soon but perk we appreciate your time brother have a good trip out to seattle up in mount olympia yeah, correct thank mount you. olympia beautiful up there yeah. i love it uh, olympia national park yep yeah. Yeah. yeah well thank you all for having me the, the work you guys are doing is just incredible man just keep grinding and keep impacting lives Hey, you're a part of this, dude. And then, you know, if you ever need anything to reach out and uh, keep changing lives, man. Yeah, we're, yeah. Uh, we're so pumped to have you. So, Thanks uh, so much. safe travels, dude. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. See ya. That was perk, man. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Jared, for coming on the show with us. I know you're super busy out there and the time zones are always tough, but uh, you crushed it, man. And, and just to, to hear you talk about, you know, your passion for helping people, you know, and, and really making an impact on the policy out there and, and worldwide or if nationally, at least uh, is really big. So um, cool to see. What do you think about it? That's so powerful, man. He's just such a good dude and doing things for the right reasons. And he's in a great position now to make a big change. And I can't even imagine going through some of the things that he has to go through with DC and with some of the 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 processes and they probably don't go as smoothly and quickly as they would want them to but he handles it man he owns it and he's putting together some really good stuff for some amazing people and um, he's saving lives like literally what he is doing is saving lives every single day that is why this is so powerful and that's why we love Jay Perk and really good fantasy baseball writer too if you're into fantasy baseball check him out on Twitter man go check out his stuff and see it because uh, the minor league write-ups that he does and, and the different things that he's doing within the fantasy community 
it's been pretty cool to watch. So very, very proud of him and excited to have him on our staff. He's got, he's got a great pulse for that minor league, the, all the minor leagues really. So uh, if you're looking for some, some low budget ballers you can pick up for your team, uh, he is the guy to follow. Like we'll, we'll link all his stuff in the uh, description uh, below, along with uh, some links for Project Sandlot and things like that. Again, reminder, this is a big reminder. Make sure you get on the newsletter if you're not signed up. The, that is gonna be the one place that we're gonna be delivering news first and those people are going to benefit the most from uh, this big project we have coming up. So uh, other than that, we're not going to reveal too much, but, uh, you know, thanks for listening. And, and once again, if you if you guys have anything you want us to break down, leave it in the comments. You know, like we, we're trying to get some uh, some some reviews and those people that leave reviews might get rewarded, too. So uh, throw some comments down there. Throw a like if you liked it and sh subscribe, 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 subscribe to our channel uh, yes. from us. BZB. Deuces. Yeah.